Hi, I'm Iris Fritz. I'm with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'm here today to talk to you about the relationship of Ohm's Law in a series circuit and in a parallel circuit. But the first thing that we have to do is we have to establish some understanding of what Ohm's Law is and how it actually associates with many things that go on around you in everyday life. So I want to develop an understanding that will stay with you and help you hopefully see the simplicity in some of what you're learning right now at Dunwoody. If you look at, let's just review something that you're already familiar with, Ohm's Law. And we know right now that Ohm's Law is equal to the voltage is equal to current times resistance. If I solve for current, I will change the formula to reflect looking out of, if you will, current's view. And what that means is I'm going to go ahead and simply solve for I. The operation affecting I right now is multiplication by resistance. And I do not want this R here. So I will use opposite operations. And if you remember, as long as we do it to both sides, we maintain the equality. If I divide both sides by resistance, what it does for us is it cancels from this side and shifts the relationship to the left side of the formula. And again, as long as we do it to both sides, we're OK. We keep the equality intact. And when I do this, I have another way now to look at Ohm's law, if you will, out of what current, the association with current. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance, or I'm putting it, if you will, in a little easier uh, form for us to have more conversation with. I can say that current is indeed equal to voltage divided by resistance. Now let's think about this. And what I want to do is I want to make this easier for you because what we found at Dunwoody is that this is a very abstract concept dealing with particles that we do not see, but boy, if our finger gets in the way of current flow, we'll feel it. And I want to relate it to something that you do know and understand with regards to movement or flow. If you get in your car in the morning, something that you do every day to get to Dunwoody, you flow down the highway. If you will, there is movement. Your car leaves your home, it flows down the freeway or the highway, whatever road you take to get you to Dunwoody, and then you eventually arrive. And I'm going to use some of that thinking today to help us understand current flow. Now, current flow is equal to voltage divided by resistance. We've already figured that out. But really, what is current flow? And this is what, in the 1800s, the ancients, if you will, I call them the ancients. They're not that ancient. But in the 1800s, our elders had to think about. They had to take what felt abstract and had to start to relate it to things that they knew and understood. So going into modern time with this, we get in our vehicle, and we leave, and we travel down the freeway. And the rate at which our car is traveling is called velocity. Velocity is read in a car on a speedometer. And it tells us how many miles we've traveled per how long it took us. Or if you will, something you're very comfortable with, which is miles per hour. And that is the speed or the flow of our car. I'm going to refer to it as the flow of our car down the freeway. So the flow of the car is referred to in science as velocity. And velocity is the movement of an object. So if I'm thinking about our vehicle, our car leaves and it flows until we get to Dunwoody, right? And sometimes what happens is there are res there's resistance in the way of, if you will, the flow of our vehicle. And I'm going to draw this road bump very much like what you've seen in class, something called the resistor. Now, we know, and now I'm going to just talk electron talk, we know that a negatively charged particle, or if you will, negatively charged particles, will travel down a wire as long as we give them a positive charge so they're attracted to it. So again, 
If I set up a positive potential over here and I have a voltage source with negatively charged particles sitting in it, I set that up and you know what? Those electrons, just like little cars traveling down the freeway, go as fast as they can to get them to where they need to go. You can think of this, and it might be a little crude association, but it works really well as electron cars that are going as fast as they can. Now think of a car where, if you will, your pedal, the accelerator, is maxed out and going as fast as it can down the freeway. And then it hits what I'm going to refer to as a road bump, resistance. So something is going to resist the flow of this car as it's coming down as fast as it can down the wire. So think of me as Wonder Woman. Think of me as putting, if you will, some resistance in the way. I'm going to get rid of that subscript. We're not ready yet. And now I'm going to talk to you further about this flow. This again is referred to as current. So think of me, if you will, putting in the path of something that is moving as fast as it can go to get to where it needs to go, that positive charge. Think of me as this resistor. I'm going to just stand here for a second. And here comes the electrons. And they are now flowing, leaving the voltage source because I've given them a positive potential to go to. And I, being Wonder Woman, put resistance in their way. So, something coming as fast as it can down the wire, and I am resisting the movement of it, what happens is, if you will, the wheels are spinning. And I don't know if you've ever touched a wheel that's been spinning before, but it's hot. And we like that in the land of, if you will, electrons in Ohm's law, because we can harness the energy from the friction that's caused by resisting the flow, in this case, of the electrons. So again, if I'm pushing back on this vehicle as it's coming at me and I'm resisting its flow, the wheels are still spinning. There are no brakes on this vehicle. That car is going to go as fast as it can to get it to where it needs to go. Now we're going to talk Ohm's law. That current flow, no matter what, is going to go to the positive potential. But I am resisting the movement of it and I'm developing through this resistance I'm developing friction, and I'm going to harness the energy from the friction to do work for me. Welcome to Ohm's Law. That's exactly what's going on. So your current flow is the movement, if you will, the flow of these electrons going to the positive charge. And we, the good minds around you, came up with this whole idea of resisting the flow. And this will actually get hot. That's one thing you'll notice with resistors. If you ever touch one that has had current flow going through it for a while, it gets hot to the touch. And I think the best example of really continuing our conversation about what's going on is to draw a simple, what we call, series circuit where there is only one current path. And I want to talk to you about what's going on when it hits this resistive load, the friction that we're going to harness from it. So with that thinking, Back in the 1800s, especially uh, early 1800s really, there were some scientists that started to play this out. Using Ohm's Law and some of this thinking, using what they knew about the movement of a horse, getting from one city to the next, there is a flow of that horse, the resistance that comes in the way of that, using also what they understood about travel with regards to sea travel and some of the other many things that they had started to understand and were able to test, they started to apply this to this understanding of Ohm's Law. And what they did was they started to take something that would give them some resistance on a wire. Carbon was one of the first, if you will, resistive loads that was used that would have a high heating potential. It would, if you will, um, allow a lot of current flow to come over here with a lot of friction and not melt or burn out, but instead glow. And so very quickly, let me just draw an example of what something like that might look like. It's called a light bulb. So the simple light bulb, since this is wire, if I bend this, 
your simple light bulb is a simple resistive network. It's called a load, and it's doing work for us. When these electrons are let loose from the voltage source where they're housed, and they flow and they hit the resistor, you actually create a lot of friction and harness the energy off of it, and it glows and it gives us light, which is an awesome thing. And the ancients, or if you will, the guys in the 1800s, the scientists, played with carbon. Then they improved their, if you will, resistors because the carbon itself wasn't doing enough uh, good work. It would eventually break after maybe 13 hours of use or 12 hours of use. So then the next phase was to go into um, bamboo, and they used bamboo carbon to prolong the life and light up for us. And then they went into tungsten later on, which, had, um, which allowed a huge amount of heat and friction to go through here without breaking. And then nowadays, of course, we have all kinds of wonderful uh, light abilities.